We all look for signs, don't we? A chink of blue sky peeking through the heavy grey cloud. Green shoots on the bare branches of the trees in early spring. A hint of colour in the cheeks of loved ones who have been ill. We all look for signs of better things to come. It must be human nature. And so it was with the crowd who were following Jesus. They wanted a sign that would tell them that Jesus would be the one who would release them from the Roman occupation. The one who would free them from oppression. The one who would raise up the might of Israel once again. Still, they didn't get it. Or maybe they did, but were afraid of what message the message which Jesus brought would mean for them and their way of life. The Pharisees were among these asking for a sign. Jesus knew that they had already seen enough to convince them that he was indeed the Messiah, but they chose not to believe. They refused to open their hearts to him. And when they pestered Jesus again and again, he turned to face them and shocked them with his response. This is a wicked generation. He said, it asks for a sign, but none will be given except the sign of Jonah. For Jonah was a sign to the Ninevites. So also will the Son of Man be to this generation. The sign of Jonah. Whatever did this mean? Well, if we read the scriptures, we should know. Jonah was a prophet who, who God called to preach to the wicked people of the Assyrian city of Nineveh. Jonah knew that Assyria was a cruel nation and he didn't like the sound of this assignment. So he ran in the opposite direction and boarded a boat to take him as far away as possible from Nineveh. Well, that didn't end well, did it? Or at least it took an unexpected turn and Jonah ended up in the belly of a fish when the boat was starting to sink. Oh dear. But was that the end of Jonah? No. What did he do when inside the fish? He prayed. And after three days and three nights, the fish emptied Jonah onto dry land. God again asked him to go to Nineveh, and this time he obeyed. He took God's message and he preached it there until the people listened and repented of their wickedness. And God saw that they had listened and repented and showed mercy on them. Job done. Jonah had carried out the task set for him with great success once he had got over his initial reluctance. But what did Jonah do then? He resented God's forgiveness to those... To, he resented God's forgiveness to these wicked people. And then he took shelter under a leafy plant which shaded him from the heat of the sun. God then caused the plant to wither and die. And Jonah suffered in the blazing sun and grew weak until he wanted to die. But God reminded him who is in control and that his mercy is given to those of his choosing. So when Jesus referred to the sign of Jonah, he was telling us that salvation is for those who put their trust in him. Gentile and Jew alike. The Pharisees, of course, didn't like this. And their resolve to catch him out grew. But Jesus went on and reminded them of how the Queen of Sheba, having heard the great wisdom of Solomon, travelled many hundreds of miles to visit the king. She came laden with gifts for him and was amazed at his great wisdom and how content and happy his people were. She recognised that God had provided for him and she gave praise to God herself. Jesus reminded us all, that we were witnessing something far greater than the preaching of Jonah or the wisdom of Solomon. The people of Nineveh and the Queen of Sheba had turned to God on the basis of the teaching and wisdom of those far less wise than Jesus. We had already seen for ourselves his healing power, his amazing miracles and his love for the outcasts and the poor. What further signs could we need? 